there is an alternative moral universe on the web. The hacker underground has its own moral code, and it has enormous power to make big business and government listen to its point of view. Hackers don't wave placards on the street. They can protest from home, deface a website with electronic graffiti, or crash a web server. From his base in Manhattan, Ricardo Dominguez has coordinated crippling attacks on the White House web server and sites such as the Pentagon, the Frankfurt Stock Exchange and the Mexican government. He uses the internet to protest against the military suppression of the native population in the Chiapas region of Mexico. The Mexican Revolution Taking the side of the Zapatista movement, which campaigns for greater autonomy in Chiapas, his group, the Electronic Disturbance Theatre, has waged war online. He calls it Digital Zapatismo. What we wanted to do is create a process by which a large community could gather together and sit down, following the traditions of Thoreau, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, ACT UP, and, and just create a symbolic disturbance based on the weight of that community. Que vale. Que viva Chiapas. Que viva Mexico. Que viva Zapata. There are times when the human community in the flesh has to stand on the superhighway for a brief period of time, like any uh, civil disobedience, and say, ya basta, enough is enough. Ya basta. But how do you hold a sit-in on the web? Dominguez turned to Carmen Karasic, a former hacker and programmer. Karasic helped write Floodnet, the software that has become the main weapon of the electronic disturbance theater. Floodnet automated the process of striking the reload key on a website. People on their home PCs could download a website automatically every seven seconds. With sufficient users online working together, this would soon overload a target website. Floodnet is a Java applet which reloads the refresh button over and over on the, based on the number of people who participate on the action. It's like a little wheel, which is the applet, and it hits the button over and over and goes, can I have information? Website goes, yes. Okay, here you go. Hello, can I have information? Yes, here you go. Hello, can I have information? 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 Can I have information? Can I have more, more, more? And then finally the server says, I can't give out any more information right now. I think if you're going to make some sort of political statement in cyberspace, it should be a collective statement. It should be a statement that is not just my opinion, but a statement that's multiple thousands of people's opinion. In 1998, targeting the website of the President of Mexico to protest about Chiapas, Dominguez organized a mass online sit-in through Floodnet. We started the action, it was a four-hour action, and during those four hours, some 38,000 people around the world joined, and many people around the world got the message from President Cedillo's website saying, at this moment, too many requests are taking place, please come back later. With the cyber squatting of Floodnet, Electronic Disturbance Theatre has pioneered a whole new arena of protest, online electronic civil disobedience, a mix of hacking and activism known as Hacktivism. One of the things that um, cyberspace does is it brings individual power to anyone who cares to learn the technology. If you want to do it, you can do it. And that's the sort of leveling of the playing field that I'm sure really scares the hell out of governments. Because we basically put the tools in these individuals' hands to do whatever they want with them, and we're able to mobilize people at a global level at a moment's notice. 1998 was the dawn of cyber war. In April, the Electronic Disturbance Theatre launched a 24-hour attack on the Pentagon to continue its protest against the Mexican government. 
To their surprise, the Pentagon took the attack so seriously, it decided to strike back at the hackers by launching a hostile program at each of its tormentors to crash Floodnet. This was the first act of offensive information war that had ever occurred that we know of publicly. Uh, the Pentagon broke a law called the Posse Comitatus Law, which means that the government uh, cannot use the Navy, the Army, uh, or any um, intelligence against the civilian population in the United States. And they were attacking civilian servers here in New York City. It also was overkill by far for, for what we were doing. Of course they're scared. They're not in control anymore. The electronic disturbance theater's methods have been adopted by other groups. In the battle in Seattle in 1999, the protesters against the World Trade Organization conference not only coordinated their street demonstrations via the internet, they attacked the WTO web server and brought it to a standstill. A more human face needs to be put on the global This is what happens to the corporate democracy. In New York, William Taylor, who goes by the handle Reverend Billy, wages online war against the global ambitions of Disney and the Starbucks coffee company. When not disrupting service in Starbucks, he urges hackers to stage an online sit-in. Unfortunately, he's never mustered enough support to be effective, presumably because coffee is the hacker's drink of choice. In 1999, as e-commerce exploded on the net, the tactics of cyber war and virtual protests were turned against the commercial world. Online sit-ins and website defacements have become a daily occurrence. Anita Ramasastri of Washington State University has been monitoring new ways in which hackers are railing against what they consider the strip mauling of their web. There is a struggle for the heart of cyberspace going on now, and hackers are part of it. One has to remember that the internet, when it started, was a, a widely open architecture that was really unregulated. Perhaps the Wild West, but one would say to, that the freedom really created um, innovation, freedom, the idea of open code or programs that everybody had access to. And now you have increasing numbers of corporations who not only have used the internet, but are copywriting and patenting everything that's there, from the, the material that's published to the technology and the programs that one uses to access the information. And so you're seeing a backlash against that. Really, they're fighting for the soul of the Internet. Uh, should the Internet be owned by corporations where you almost have to pay a toll to get onto the information superhighway? Or is the Internet free? Is it a public library where everyone can check out a book and, and have free access? And I think hackers would say it should be free. Hackers have defaced commercial sites like Kriegsman Furs and the American domestic airline, ValueJet. The Pope's Christmas message has also provoked attack. The news is the Vatican has just hired a hacker to prevent further embarrassing security breaches. Even God hires hackers. Uh, the hacktivism that you see is really about not just any corporation, but about companies who violate or sort of breach certain codes of the internet, or netiquette, as some people say. The Electronic Disturbance Theatre stepped into the debate about internet freedom in one celebrated domain dispute. Etoys.com with an S aggressively attacked Etoy.com, a net art group from Sweden that had existed since 94. But of course, 99 was the year of e-commerce. And this Goliath emerged saying that Etoy.com without an S was disturbing millions and millions of dollars worth of value because people accidentally forgot to put an S. And they shut down the group using a U.S. court. But what eToys.com didn't realize was that there was already an electronic civil disobedience movement. And we started a 12 days of Christmas action against eToys, where we declared we would do a virtual sit-in that would bring eToys stock down to zero. And by January 15th, eToys.com had relented. 
had given back eToy, the art group, their name, their domain, would pay for all the court costs and promised never to bother another net art group again.